Thanks everyone for coming out tonight and um, to hear a few things about objects. I'm not sure, well actually I do know. I had a conversation earlier tonight and there were a couple of fans of object here so I do know a few of you are familiar with our space and um, but what you probably don't know is that we've been around for 48 years. We've actually evolved into um, the organization we are and we're about to go evolving into yet another whole I think being an entity. And I think that's the exciting thing that I'm going to try to illustrate to you today in talking to you about what Object has been doing because actually we're doing a lot of rapid prototyping right now. We're basically going, if we're going to open a new space in 2015, we can't just open the doors and go, here we are, we've got the program. We actually need to test and have a way to play with things to see how people respond whether we get some you know, uptake on things, whether or not there is a program that could be delivered in an interesting way across the country. Now, if I want to switch things, is it through the iPad? Swipe. swipe as I go. But I'm going to take a, a, a mo I do know how to swipe an iPad. <laughs> I just wasn't sure about this technology link here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. That was my quick reminder. Thank I appreciate that. Um, I'm actually going to take a pause away from what I was going to say and introduce two things. One is that we're actually going to try to do this less as a talk and divide it into two parts. I want to talk for a bit and then I actually want all of you guys to talk for a while. And we've actually got a little process which is going to force you to hopefully help drive some new ideas into all the prototyping and experimentation we're doing with our space. So if you feel like staying around the, the time that we have allocated, which is the next hour, we want to really talk for about 20, 25 minutes and then get you guys talking to give us some other ideas and things that we can work with. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that Vince, um, I'm a big fan of Vince's work before I ever met the guy. And I have to say, in the privilege of running different arts institutions, both in Canada and Australia, um, one of the things that I've done is when I've seen work that I really, really have admired, I force myself to actually get onto a plane and go somewhere or pick up the phone and call somebody and say, I want to meet you because I really admire your work and I think there's something I'd like to do with you in terms of a creative project. And Vince was one of those people. I um, had actually collected a number of his books, um, his particular art books, because I used to run actually a contemporary art gallery um, or a center back in Canada called The Power Plant. And I used to just admire his books. They, they were the kind of books that I would sit with and really enjoy. And when I came to Australia and we started working with Object, and we had the opportunity to do stuff at the Sydney Opera House, um, what I found exciting was that I wanted to do a show on graphic design, but I hated every single graphic design exhibition I'd seen in museums for about the last 10 years. They all had me looking in cases down on the ground, like kind of having a look at this particular poster or this particular book. And when I went to Vince, I said, I actually want to reimagine what an exhibition of graphic design can look like. And I've got a slide a little later on that will show you that. But I think Vince absolutely hit the mark when it came to the brief on it. And we sat down and we had great creative conversations. We fought like cat and dog. I tell you, I had some really big arguments with him. At one point, he had a proposal which I said, nah, that's not going to work. That's just not going to and, and it was the creative process of working together in terms of saying, what can we actually co-create? But in the end, he was 90%. It was as an organization, we were there to push back. We were there to say, we know we deal with public in the greatest and broadest way. And we need to find a new way to present graphic design. And I think Vince absolutely hit the mark. And for me, I can proudly say, even though uh, the biases I've curated the show, um, I have to say it's one of the best exhibitions of graphic design I'd seen every, anywhere in the world because it broke those boundaries. And I'm trying to use that as an example to say that's what Object is trying to do. It's trying to be that organization in this city and this country to stimulate new creatives, young creatives, creatives in mid-career, creatives at the end of the career, to give them an opportunity to look at what's happening around the world and what's happening in Australia, but also to take it to a really broad audience to say, this is actually a pool of creativity that could stimulate the economy, could make the digital economy even greater, could change the workplace in terms of the way, if we look at how designers actually work, 
there are tools and mechanisms that could change what we do. Now I'll go back to my notes and actually keep on track a little bit here. Um, this is only up here to remind me that the last talk was Roy Green. Were any of you here at the Roy Green talk? I know, John, you were, but any few others? Economist, big fan, he was great. Um, and all I wanted to say is there is a connectivity to um, what I think um, at this point Vince is curating in a sense as a group of speakers. Um, Roy Green is about to open the new Frank Gehry Business School. Well, it's not called the Frank Gehry Business School. It's designed by Frank Gehry and it's um, a bit the UTS Business School. Um, what's exciting about, I think, the project is that as, a, as an economist, a dean of a business school, he's reached out to an organization like Object and said, where can the place where we cross paths actually exist in this new Frank Gehry space? And there'll be more on that in the future, but what I'm really excited is that an organization like Object isn't just about designers talking to other designers, it's about this new hybridity, it's this new space that's so exciting and that is all of a sudden, business is recognizing design has value beyond you know, just making it look better, that it, there is actually methodology and process. So that's, that's a big thing in what I wanted to do in terms of linking to um, UTS. Object over the years has been known for its large scale exhibitions. Um, probably the last decade has seen us move from sort of smaller exhibitions to these much broader surveys. But we're also known for doing solo exhibitions. Now these exhibitions, will be in high profile locations, temporary locations like the Sydney Opera House. That was three years temporary. Um, in fact, we're wa working on two month temporary to um, even a couple of days in some cases because we think that environments need to change and we need to have flexibility. We also take our exhibitions to different parts of the world. We've sent our exhibitions to the V&A in London. We've worked with the Milan Triennale. We've worked with um, Spiral Gallery in Tokyo, as well as a number of different design spaces across the Asia Pacific. I'm also really excited that our exhibitions aren't trying to be just the standard exhibition. So what we sometimes do is we look at a medium. And in fact, this is a great opportunity for me to say our, our actual beginnings are in the handmade. That's where the, the center has started. They used to talk about the handmade and design. Our breadth of design has just exploded. And I think in a moment, I'm gonna read you a list of some of the design practices we're gonna be looking at in an upcoming show. But we still go back to the handmade because we think there's a lot there in terms of the, um, the process, the idea process, the actual methodology, the, the kind of community that works in these areas. But we don't wanna just do a show of good ceramics. What we wanted to do was a show looking at ceramic practice in Australia that actually started to push the boundaries of what ceramics were. So we had 3D um, uh, rapid prototyping uh, works that were actually done, so ceramic as a material being 3D uh, prototyped. We had works that were made out of um, uh, uh, talcum powder. Um, as, a, as a means, that a, a, it, because that is so much, um, there's so much clay in talcum powder, so she was working with these beautiful ornate objects. But the really key thing to this is that we took the exhibition, instead of doing a catalog, we made the publication digital. There are 30 interviews with artists, with other artists who are not in the show, talking about the artists in the show. We have um, gallery dealers, collectors, students of some of these people. What we created was this hybrid publication. We threw out the hard sort of printed thing and, and a lot of eyes rolled. A lot of people went, gosh, that's, well, why are you doing this? Well, we put the catalog right into the exhibition space. The iPads, there are six that travel across the country. This show was in um, Object last year, but is only right now a third of the way through a three year national tour. It's going across the country from, um, I'm trying to remember, it just opened in Adelaide, and I think it's next up in um, Canberra or, or Brisbane, but it, it is touring for the next um, two and a half years. But what's great is we're taking this technology in an exhibition into galleries that don't normally actually have this kind of interface. And what they can do is they can sit down, look at a work, and be in the artist's studio at the same time. We actually have created a means for people to feel the real experience of an artist talking from the studio, to understand what it looks like, feels like, to actually see the work in process being made. 
So all of a sudden, we're moving from that passive experience of, I see a work and I admire it and think it's really good and I'd like one of those to take home, to understanding what goes behind it. And I think that actually speaks to the value of design, to understand what it took to make it, what process, what ideas, what was the stimulation. Um, as the tour travels, just we had our curator who um, curated the show, Danielle, um, who did the show, was down in Adelaide for the opening of the exhibition and for a conference. And there were a number of people who were rolling their eyes about how can you move from printed media to digital. Well, as soon as we said we had 47 different countries downloading this publication, I can tell you we didn't send that publication to more than maybe a couple of people overseas because it cost us so much money to mail it. So it was really a publication that really Australia got to see. And Australia kind of knew more about things in the, you know, of shows that we did. But in this case, we have 47 countries who are downloading and understanding a whole range of new contemporary Australian practice. So for us, um, breaking some new, um, some new boundaries. Um, I said everything I was going to. So this kid was fabulous. We have so many good shots. We've used on so many promotional bits of material because she was all over the, um, the iPad. So um, we've also spent a good part of our work over the last 10 years looking at indigenous practice. We think that the lines that are blurred within indigenous practice are not as clear or, 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 or siloed as what we've done in Western practice. We, we tend to go, there's painting, there's sculpture, there's design, there's graphic design. There's a much greater sense of, um, there's a continuum between practices, I think, out of, out of indigenous practice. And we've often looked at, when we say design and the handmade, we find ourselves looking at all kinds of different things, from baskets through to beadwork. And in this case, we actually looked at a whole range of mediums, but we looked at um, what were really sculptural works. And we picked a theme called um, menagerie to look at a whole range of animals and stories out of the indigenous community. And this show, and very proudly, the whole show has been bought by the Australian Museum. So as a collection, um, and that doesn't happen very often. So that's big news for us. The, every artist got paid. Their work is now in the collection. And um, in fact, if you missed it here in Sydney, it's going to be re-shown at the um, Australian Museum in the next, I think, about six months or so. So our touring is probably what you know least of, but this is, we reach out to about 40 different venues across the country. And we find ourselves in, from the, the, the smallest and most remote venues, which include um, Port Hedland on the one side, through to um, small communities in regional New South Wales. But we also, of course, hit major centers. In Melbourne, during the Melbourne Design Festival, we found ourselves with three exhibitions basically having more shows of any other design organization in Melbourne during their own festival. Um, they actually have now stopped that. They, 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 they kind of went, hmm, <laughs> don't know about Sydney having such a hold. But um, we've been very lucky that we've had such a great response. And these are public galleries that have traditionally shown what we'd say is more contemporary art than it is the design field. And I think right now what we're realizing, or they're realizing, is what a response their audiences, even in regional um, locations, are having to um, design. They, they actually go, well, this is part of the, our, our world. I've always said the person walking down the street doesn't just go, many of us go into a gallery and look at an artwork. But there are a whole bunch of us who walk down the street and we're taking in architecture and fashion and jewelry as we walk down the streets. All of that's being processed. That's actually the world we live in. And I think that's why design is actually something people are pretty interested in. And our way of curating and putting it into an exhibition is to give people that greater experience of how that work is made and how that work comes to be. Now, the show that we're working on for next year called CUSP, Designing for the Next Decade. So we're on the cusp of, we think, the next 10 years, some design practices are going to have a really big influence on the lives that we're living. And just to give you an idea, and um, I'm looking forward to the design of next decade that gets these glasses on my head quicker, but we're going to be showing architecture, data visualization, conceptual fashion design, ecological design, social robotics, systems design, interactive and health design, composition and sonic arts, 
exertion design and the traditional object design. I read you that list to say those are the lines that we're blurring because the world of design is blurring those lines. That is the new hybrid. That is the exciting space that I think that we want to be in. I mean, and it's not to say that we're neglecting other practices. We're showing those as well, but we're also trying to say where is the new space, the new hybrid that's starting to develop because that's actually going to impact on our future. Our next 10 years will be defined by these new practices. I think it was to Jackie earlier this evening, we were talking about, she, she mentioned um, um, minority report in terms of, you know, the designers using the boards and moving things around. And I don't know about you, but that's, that's a film that I love, not for the story, but I love the imagery that exists in that. And I think back to some of the books that I read 20 years ago and how much there are so many things that have been designed in that particular space of science fiction that we're today living and trying to create. We actually, science fiction, in a sense, the creativity behind it is giving us the inspiration often to design and create and develop these things. And I guess what we're trying to do is say, these shows hopefully will be a stimulation to designers like yourself or people interested in design or business people who are going, we need to make a change. Where are things moving to? And we're hoping that these shows actually forecast where things are going and try to stimulate that new hybrid. Um, finally, we've, mo we've moved, oops. there we go. We've moved our magazine of, we're going on 20 years of publishing a magazine, um, 17 years in printed, the last two years as an experiment in the digital space. We've just hit over 80 countries downloading the magazine. Um, the magazine is no longer a traditional magazine. This is a free app. We're free for the first two years. We're probably going to be free for another half year, and then um, we're going to try to move forward on what is our sort of economic plan behind it. But right now, we have the funding, mostly through really generous corporate support through a great design firm called Canvas. Um, this, this particular, this is the contents page. When, and this is actually sitting with Apple right at the moment and will be released in the next, we hope, week to two weeks. But because of the new um, System 6, um, they're flooded with all kinds of dis wonderful disaster problems that you might have noticed on your iPads or iPhones at this stage. But this particular contents page, when you push on one particular spot, every article that has a relationship to that article in terms of the theme will gravitate towards it. So we're looking at people who might want to read based on an idea or a theme that they want to explore rather than a linear list of contents that says this is what's on this page and that page. And it will allow you to take you into the magazine one particular way. Personally, I think you'll get lost and you might not see all the articles, but we reckon most people don't read the whole magazine. They read what they really are interested in. So um, we're playing with that. We've got another page where you actually blow on it and the dust from the page disappears and the article is actually on design practice that uses dust. We're in some really wacky places, but that's the fun of it. Um, we've also got profiles on people. We've gone out to young um, um, digital, um, I, I guess, uh, media people who are basically saying, you know, we, we want a small article. Um, this turned into a mega project. The person put in all the time and energy made this we're willing to do it. So if any of you want to do a digital project, um, we don't have the big bucks. In fact, we have no bucks. This is, um, um, Vince often makes fun of me for being always cap in hand. This is a nonprofit organization. We do things out of a spirit of goodwill, generosity, and great gifting. And I have to say, we're leading, I believe, in arts organizations in the digital sphere because people just want to see us and see this organization succeed. And so um, this particular um, young person who, who did the project took what was going to be a small little profile on um, um, Janet Lawrence and turned it into this great multimedia presentation that is part of the, um, the upcoming issue of the magazine. There are three issues so far, and um, they are downloadable through iTunes at Object AU. Um, at the very core of who and what we are is learning. 
we believe it is absolutely an essential thing of what we need to embrace in all aspects of what we do. And I'm very lucky tonight, and my team works some ridiculous hours, as I know many of you do, but um, Annette Maurer, who's the head of learning for Object, is sitting over there, and she's joined me this evening, because she's going to help us with the, um, the, the little project I'm going to throw out to all you guys. Annette is um, the complete, I mean, I'm going to use guru because it was just used a little earlier. I mean, is our guru of, uh, of learning and of design thinking, which we know is a phrase and a term being used all across, you know, business is starting to look at it. We're seeing it in, you know, the teaching in business schools where there's a, gr but we actually think it needs to start a lot earlier than just in sort of, you know, uh, I guess people who are mid-career. We actually want to bring it right back to very early learning. And Annette has created this magnificent program that right now we're working with nine and 10 year olds, um, taking the program into schools, bringing the schools into other locations, having schools work collaboratively, looking at the tools of design thinking to actually creatively think through challenges, problems, um, issues in their worlds that they want to make better or change to be something different. Now, the best way for me to do this is to actually put on a four minute video and it's, it's wonderful because you're going to see some kids who are absolutely magnificent and um, this was a one day project. Uh, I'm supposed to say, and please hand these around, we are doing a possible campaign to raise some money for this program. So if I can get you to pass a few of these around. Um, we get no money from the Department of Education, no money from the Arts Department to do this program because they kind of go, we don't quite get it. It sounds really, really good, but it doesn't fit into anything we've got articulated as a program. This possible campaign is for us to raise about $20,000 over the next few weeks to just try to give this um, project another push. But we think it has the, op the, the real opportunity to be a leadership program in education here in Australia. So a number of years ago, about two and a half years ago, um, my board of directors, it's a nonprofit board, a, a representative of so many different communities. We, we have a, um, a, a senior partner in McKinsey's through to um, um, Anthony Burke, who's the head of architecture at the UTS um, Architecture School. So it's, it's a really wonderful and diverse group of people. And um, they, they turned to me a couple of years ago and said, Steve, great four-year plans, great sense of the organization is, keeps getting better. Um, but what we'd really like is a bold, brave vision of what the future of object could be. If we're going to be 50 years of programming, we shouldn't just be the best we've been after 50 years, but maybe it's time to take stock and actually you know, look at what we can be. To, to do that as a process and to, to move forward on that. So our team got together and started doing some work. We then ran about 10 big sessions with about 10 people each. In the end, we spoke to about 150 people about what would the future of you know, an organization look like. But that's a couple of years ago. So we started building up that proposition. And this is available. We only have a few hard copies. I print the hard copies because ministers do not look at things online. So you've got to print a few that you can put in front of a minister or a policy advisor and go, please read this. But the majority, we print very few and it's online, downloadable for free through our website. Um, this is our vision document. It's the third iteration and it gives you a really good sense, I think, of the center we're trying to, to create for the future. It tries to describe a range of programs that we're looking at for um, that we're currently in production, that we see sort of being relevant to the future. We've actually created a series of about nine or ten profiles of people that we think will use the actual facility in the future. So we're trying to actually imagine what would a six-year-old kid who's had... Actually, on that piece of paper, if you go to the Pausable site, even if you don't want to give us a penny, which is absolutely fine-ish, um, <laughs> you get right to the video. And so honestly, in four minutes, you'll see some great people talking about just what an incredible impact that this program has had on so many kids. Um, 
And what I'm going to do is probably take a minute to tell you a, my version of a story. So it's, it's kind of gone down a couple of hands because I wasn't there, but this is my, my version. But um, we worked with a school in, in Surrey Hills. And, and the kids actually were saying, and, and that excuse my sort of, sort of creative li you know, uh, liberties with this. Um, the kids were saying, we, we said, OK, we want to identify an issue. And the issue that they finally kind of came down to was they actually were, ha they were finding recess not, they weren't actually happy with recess. And the reason they weren't happy with recess was the equipment that they would use was actually always broken or not available and there wasn't anything to do. And Annette very beautifully worked them through a process to take them through not only what could you do in terms of, oh, we can just you know, buy new equipment. That fixes the problem. And that got them to one key issue that I think as des many of you who are designers would understand and know, and that's the issue of insights. To get them to really understand what was going wrong and why was it going wrong. Quick version of it is we jump ahead. Those kids designed not only um, a new space for ho holding the equipment, but they found a metaphor. They love shopping, you know, going into a food store and shopping and everything's in order. So their equipment's all now in order based on, you know, their, their metaphor of a, of a store. Um, the equipment is actually run by two kids every week are responsible for looking after the equipment um, so that there's a sign in, sign out process. All stuff that seems reasonable, but these kids themselves fix their issue at nine years of age. And their principal just kind of went, this has shifted things. This is about giving, empowering these kids to actually be able to have a system and a means, a way to talk together, to collaborate, to actually create some new clear answers to how to move forward. And this program, I mean, honestly, four minutes, it's the video, um, sh the woman who did the video for us was great. It just, it, it just makes that emotional tie in terms of why these kids think it was so amazing to be part of this experience and the kind of tools that they walked away with. Um, that's the brochure. The only highlight I was going to say is that in the sort of big picture of our future, we see our organization divided into three sort of parts. And I think that what's missing here is it should say exhibition and learning space. That's really what the, the one bubble is. And that's probably where predominantly we've been in the exhibition space. And we've kind of moved it and said, we think another third is digital. We think the digital sphere is absolutely essential in terms of being a really um, the most relevant organization we can be. And then what we call public projects or the public realm. We're interested in moving outside of a space to ensure that we have a real public interaction. Um, so it might be on the streets of Sydney. It might be um, a, a way of taking projects into other communities across the country. Now, specific to your question, I have signed a confidentiality agreement, which I thought by this moment I'd be able to go, here's where it is. Now, I can't say the words, but I'm sure, sorry? What was the question? The question was about our new space, the sort of what's happening, where it's, where it's going. We've been working with a developer for the last two years, probably two and a half years, but we got a, um, a signed memorandum of uh, understanding about a year ago, and that, um, Memo had all these things that we would endeavor to do over the next sort of 12 to 24 months. We've so surpassed all those things, and I have to say it's been amazing in terms of the experience. The company or the, uh, the developer, is, it, it's, a, it's a massive development, and um, we are but a speck if you, you think about our space, but we are part of a communications plan which has timings as to when they're going to announce this as a, as a major project. Um, I'm trying to give you enough clues that you should be able to kind of get where and what it might be. Um, it's, it's, it has the greatest opportunity to reimagine the public realm of a space as well. And what is, what's really happened for us as an organization is we're no longer talking about just a building. They've actually invited us into meetings. Actually, we got ourselves invited. And then we got Annette to host a number of design thinking sessions with them. And we kind of started to understand a few of their challenges and their issues. And they kind of went, wow, this is really good. This is actually, and they weren't, it wasn't that they had a, a problem as in they didn't know how to do it. They just at this point hadn't actually gotten to the conversation. And the, the issues were just bigger than they had actually allowed time to, to, 
to allow. So we found ourselves in these conversations, and we're now finding ourselves not only developing the architectural brief, which we hopefully will be announcing at the beginning of next year for a design competition for the building, but we're actually now talking to them about our work all throughout the public realm of this particular site. And it means that we're going to be working with everything from urban planners to des urban um, designers through to architects to artists to um, these people who sort of sit in the hybrid. And that's the ex exciting territory that I think Object now finds itself in by positioning our ideas of trying to change and trying to communicate those ideas as clearly as we can we're finding ourselves in this, what we consider very hybrid um, um, opportunity and activity. So can I say 2015 is when we expect we will open. That's what was on the cards as of about two weeks ago. Last week they said, oh, it could be 2016 because we actually might move the building from here to here. And I was saying earlier about having to find comfort with the discomfort. When you are but a spec on a major development and one that they really believe in, um, you do find yourself being moved around in terms of communication plans, um, announcements for, uh, for buildings, but also for where your location might be and in the exact timing of opening. But I think this is the closest we're going to come to seeing a major design center in Australia because I don't see another one happening across the country. I see RMIT opening a design hub. I see you know, other centers doing things that they can, but we're hedging our bet and thinking, what we've built over 50 years has the ability to transform into the true center that I think this country deserves. And that's my introduction to object. And um, I think uh, what we'd like to do is um, invite you into a bit of a, a little process. Yes, sorry. Director at object.com.au for any correspondence, you, message, ideas, anything you want to send along and www.object.com.au for accessing um, any of our websites, including Design Emergency. And of course, there's iTunes, where you'll find us on iTunes U as well as within the apps section of iTunes. So let me. T oh. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. There are a lot of things we want to change, and I guess this is one pathway and one road. Um, I guess I, I want to summarize. We're going to take these. We're going to dissect and look at them. I'm not sure how you're going to see your idea, but you might go, um, that sounds like something I might have said that night. Um, I should say there's absolutely no copyrights in these ideas. <laughs> By putting them on the wall of your own free will, you have absolutely um, given up your copyright, intellectual property rights. Well, I, I do these talks just to try to create another group of sort of ambassadors and champions for what, what might actually happen over the next couple of years. So please keep in touch. Um, we are going to be running actually a very different range of programs over the next 18 months. We've decided to put a lot of things that we've done for 48 years a little bit to the side and go, this is a time of rampant experimentation. And um, I've been given some good advice on how do, I, how do we bring our audiences along from you know, what they knew us and where we're trying to head. And it's going to be a fusion of all those things. But we are, we're looking at this as being a really potent moment of experimentation to allow us to come up with the right answers um, a couple of years down the line. Um, so please, find a way to, um, our website's the best access, the iPad, and if you have access to one, or have one, to um, download the next magazine, which should be out in the next couple of weeks. And um, keep in touch, and thank you for your contribution as well as listening. Thanks very much. Thank you.